Wake up, Link. Wake up and get ready for a great rig review. This is the closest thing I've got to the hero's garb and uh, my little floppy hat, which I'm ditching now. Welcome back to another rig review. Today we're checking out the Zelda Breath of the Wild rig. It is a fantastic rig. I'm very excited to share it with you, to walk you through it, to show you all the little things that you may have missed if you have already downloaded this rig. Oh man. It's good. And by the way, if you're new here, hi, I'm Sir Wade. I do a ton of animation stuff here on the channel. So if you're into animation or wanna learn more stuff, hit subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you don't miss new uploads. Also, if you wanna download the cave scene with the little spirally energy thing, project files like this are available on my Patreon, which is linked down below, which is my way of saying thank you for helping to support what I'm doing here on YouTube. Now this model and rig was created by the staff or Kristoff. I have his Gumroad link down below where you can download this file. And while you can download it for free, I do heavily encourage you, if you're gonna download this rig, if you're gonna use it for anything, Drop him at least one of these just to say thank you for making such an awesome thing because he's making a ton of cool stuff and just making a lot of it free for us to download. And I actually talked to Kristoff before I made this video. I had some questions about the rig. I wanted to make sure I had all the information right and he was super, super nice. He actually made this for himself, made it available to the rest of the community and there was a lot of feedback. People requesting features, little changes and he went back through and addressed a lot of them. Added a ton of stuff in there. So if you've downloaded this rig, there's a lot of new stuff that you may not know is in the rig and we're gonna go through all that. Again, if you're gonna download this, show him some love. Two quick notes on the appearance of this rig. If you notice that Zelda has black hair, it may be just because you need to go to lighting, show two-sided lighting, and then that'll probably fix your issue. And then the second thing is this rig was designed to look like a drawing. It wasn't meant to look 3D, it's meant to look 2D. So you're gonna wanna make sure you watch this video that I made a couple weeks ago. And something you're all gonna love about this rig, it's low poly enough that you can use it on any computer. If you have a laptop that doesn't run Maya like the best, this rig is not heavy. So you should be able to make stuff with it, no problem. So let's start off in the, kind of the torso area. By default, you're gonna be set to IK, meaning you have an IK shoulder and an IK hip control. And the default behavior is that when you move the shoulders, the hips actually move opposite to what the shoulders are doing, giving you that contrapasso posing angles thing. And that was designed as a beginner-friendly approach to animating this character. But if you've been doing this for a while and you want manual control or you don't wanna be counter-animating or, or something, there are two ways that I think you're gonna to wanna to know how to not have that happen. The first is if you are an IK, so let's say you're gonna have her look up into the sky and you wanted to lean her chest back then have her head go up. You may not want her butt sticking out like this. There are two ways to counteract this. The first is that if you go to the IK torso shoulder control, the chest control, you can go to sub control and turn that on. That's gonna give you this orb in the middle that will allow you to be a little bit more specific about where you can rotate and uh, counter stuff from. It gives you a way to mess with the curvature of the spine one way or the other, which you can pivot down to the hips, fix just that section. It's not perfectly precise, but you can do a lot with it. Now what you're probably gonna wanna do if you're having an issue with that and you wanna have more manual control over the character, what we're gonna do is go to the cog control, this plus behind her. That's what you'll move her through space with. So everyone's gonna wanna be using that no matter what. You can find the FK and IK switcher in here, which will switch her torso to an FK spine. Now the first joint in the chain will move her whole upper body and then everything up above that moves, you know, that section above. You'll notice that there's not a way to just move her hips by themselves. So if you did the same thing about the rib cage, she's gonna lean back to look up into the sky. And then you wanted to move the, the hips separately. By default, you can't do it, but there's a new control that just got added recently based on feedback, which is isolate hip. If you turn that on, that's in, by the way, that's in the first joint of the spine. Isolate hip, turn that on, that first control now becomes a hip control. So that gives you control over that, and then the second joint will continue to move the spine as you would expect. So there you go. Next thing I think you should know, we're gonna go to the arms for a second. Now these little uh, settings cogs right above her wrists, that is where you can switch from FK to IK here as well. So I'm gonna set her, her left, our right arm in IK, where I move this around and I can spin it. You can see I can also separate them because it doesn't go all the way. Um, if I go back to that little settings cog on that side, you can turn on the stretch. That way you, you can have it go wherever you want. You can also turn on things like the bend bows where you can be very specific about the shapes you want. You can do all the bendy arm stuff that I showed in other videos. And you'll also have a grip control, which is really nice for a lot of the props that she comes with, which we will cover towards the end. There's a lot of stuff in this rig, so definitely stick around to find out all of it. That might also be useful to know the rotation lock. So if I move, if I translate this around, you'll see how the, the hand follows the orientation of the box that it's in. If you don't want that, if you want the hand to always follow what the wrist is doing, you can turn on rotation lock and it's just gonna lock that hand as you move it around 
to stick to whatever the forearm is doing. So whatever works best for you, you have that option. Jumping over to the other arm for the FK, it's gonna behave the way you would probably expect an FK arm to behave. So we have the upper arm, the forearm, and you also have this little control right in the middle. Uh, that's gonna be this bracelet thing, so if you need to move that around separately, you can. Then you have this outer cylinder, which is your wrist control. But one thing you don't wanna forget are the clavicle controls, which are gonna be kind of in front of her chest, and that's your shoulder control. So definitely don't forget those when you're posing out your character, regardless of which IK or FK system you are using. Now let's talk about the hand for just a second. Uh, there's a little box in the middle that's the anchor for the weapons and the props. That's just gonna change where those things lock to um, it's a whole system that you don't have to set up constraints for most of the objects, we'll show that later. But for now you've got all these little orbs around her hand and that controls the bend of the fingers. And since we wanna keep those clean, there is a new control right here on the hand. Each hand has this, it's this little ring, which allows you to give a more natural curvature to her hand. Our hands don't just stay flat like this, there's a natural curve to our, our hand posture, right? It's not flat, it's curved. So, to easily build that in and allow for you to still have clean animation, you can take this little rounded control, and I recommend that you just kind of rotate it and maybe rotate it this way, and that'll give you a more natural, you can push it farther if you want, but that'll give you a more natural kind of curved finger motion. So that allows you to keep your little circle controls that move the fingers clean. You don't have to do that arcing process with the actual animation controls you're gonna wanna use. So you can separate that. Let's jump down and talk about the feet. Uh, there is a little foot cog down here, which again, same thing, you can switch FK to IK. So if you're gonna have her you know, exploring caves and swinging off stuff, you're gonna probably wanna switch those legs to FK. Uh, one benefit to the FK legs is you get the toe tap, the ability to just move the toe independently of the foot, uh, which you cannot do in IK. If you're gonna have her kind of walking around, you'd use this control hovering above and that's gonna peel the foot off the ground, which is nice. Uh, but you don't have a way to actually move just the toes by themselves unless you're in the FK skeleton. But you do have all these cool little boxes that will allow you to rotate, pivot the foot, move the foot essentially from those anchor points is what I'm gonna choose to call them. Again, if you're finding that the foot is disconnecting from the controls, it probably means you need to either lower her so that you don't have that happening, or if you are intending to do that, go to the settings cog and enable the stretch control. Uh, the neck control for her is this plus on her neck. So that will move the neck and the little collar that she's got going on. And then her head controls this big orb around her. And while we're talking about the head, one last thing that I also don't wanna forget is if I have her like lean forward to pick something up, you don't wanna have to counter animate her head. You can actually select this orb around her head and switch her head into world space. That way when you rotate her, she'll just continue looking at whatever she was looking at. Her arms can also do the same thing. If I grab the FK upper arm, I can go to local world space, and now her arm will also kind of maintain its position. So you're probably gonna wanna turn those on as well. There's a new visibility switch for that little thing on her hip before I forget to tell you that. So now we'll jump up to this settings cog, and this is where you can turn on and off a whole bunch of stuff on this character, extra controls, visibility of objects, and so on. You can also move this around if you need it to be somewhere else, if it's just more convenient. You've probably noticed the face panel next to her. I had mine turned off for a while. Um, this is gonna give you a lot of the basic controls that you're gonna need to move her face. So a lot of this is self-explanatory. You can move her brows, you can give her different expressions with her eyebrows, you can do a lot of the mouth lip sync type of stuff. A new control is the tongue curl, so if you are having dialogue in your shot, and she needs to make an L sound, you can actually just slide that slider. So jumping up to that top control, if I come up here, there's all these different categories. So we have props, which I'm gonna to come to at the end. Um, I'm gonna jump down to accessories really quick because you can actually turn on and off her cloak. But for all this stuff, I'm actually gonna go down to the very bottom and turn off the body control, which is super nice. You can now turn off all the body controls if you wanna focus on the face or if you wanna focus on the props. Also, I should have mentioned, there is a core control. I had that turned off, and I probably recommend that you do as well, unless you're gonna have her doing flips or very specific acrobatic motions. If you have the body turned on and you are set to an FK spine, this is where this is gonna get in your way. You may notice this little square thing. What that does, it's kinda of like an all control, and it'll move her from that point, so she'll rotate from the middle. That's gonna be helpful if you do want her to do a flip or something, but in most other cases where you don't wanna grab it, you can come up to the settings cog, go to core control visibility, and turn that off. So if you're grabbing that by accident, that's how you fix it. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the body controls just so we can focus on the accessories. Because I'm gonna turn on the cloak once again, and there are all these little controls, which are super cool, because you can mess with cloth. 
The hood is also its own little piece. So if it's a windy day in Hyrule and you want to show a little bit of life and you don't want her moving too much, you can show just kind of the cloth rustling and then you can tone down her performance because your shot will feel alive. You can also do the same with the hair. If you go back to accessories and turn on hair control, all controls to move her hair around. So you can translate it, you can rotate it. If it's a really windy day, you can also add ears. And there is a control for the waist object geometry, which is just the stuff kind of below her belt, below her waistband thingy. But I really want to talk about the face, because the face has some amazing controls built in. So, the first thing is the face macro. That's this big panel next to her. If you're going to use that, go for it. If you're not, you can turn it off. And I'm going to turn on the brow controls, the eye look controls, the eyelid, and the eyelid sub. So we're going to talk about the eyes and brows, the mask of the face first. First thing I should show you is this eye look control. That is going to be how you have her look around. Uh, and by default, her eyelids will follow the, the direction her eyes are pointed, which is really nice. That's the thing that naturally happens. If you don't want that, you can turn off the auto lids, but I'm gonna leave it on because it adds a nice level of organic motion. Inside this eye look, you also have a blink, which has been updated, and a new feature, you can also dilate and shrink the pupils as well as the iris. So you've got manual controls for the brows. So if you need to get a very specific brow shape, you can go ahead and push those as far as you need. Just watch out for intersections in the geometry, so you may have to pull them out in Z. Don't forget not to pull them too far or they're floating on, away from her face. So you have full manual control. So again, if you're just starting out, probably just stick to the face slider thingy and you can just move them up and down. But if you need that control, you have it. Same thing with the eyelids. You have the three manual controls that you can use to push into much bigger poses than you may be able to with the sliders. But, if, but two things you're gonna wanna note here are you'll probably clip into this kind of brow bone thing that normally moves with our eyebrows. Um, for her, there is a separate control now. This is new that you can actually move kind of that fleshy part of the brow. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the mesh view so you can see that, but that'll actually move this, this chunk of flesh above her eye, so you can get very specific with where you want that on both sides of the face. Same with this little piece of geometry, this little stylized piece. I'm using that as kind of a form line, the way Spider-Verse did, just to show where the, I don't know, eye well would be pushing, but Wherever you want to put that, you can actually move that if it's in your way. If you do choose to push these really far and you are going full manual control, you may want to turn off some of the auto lid stuff because it will intersect. So you can turn that off and then just move the eyes and then you can do that yourself. One last little control about the eyes, this is a new thing, is the eye spec controls. Down at the very bottom of the face, you can actually turn on control of these little things in the eyes. So if you had an extreme close up and you wanted to just move these little specular highlights, you can absolutely do that. You can do it as a group or you can grab individual pieces and just move each one if like one's in your way or something. I don't think there's a way to turn those off currently, but if you are like dead set on like, I do not want to use these in my shot, you could just grab them and push them back into the eye geometry and then you won't have to worry about them. Now jumping down to the cheek, nose, and mouth controls. This is the lower part of the face. You're probably gonna to want to turn on the mesh geometry thing so that when you move the cheeks around, you can actually see what parts of the face are being moved. So the main mouth control is this green ring down below her jaw. That's gonna let you rotate the jaw to open it. You can also translate it, which is a new thing. So if you need to maintain a little bit more structure or use it to emote or have her kind of shift her jaw around for whatever she might be doing, you can do that now. It'll be especially useful for, again, pushed poses. And depending on how you wanna do this, you can also use the face macros as a cheat sheet to get through these a little bit faster. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn back on my background so that we can see her a little bit better. She is not pleased with whatever it is she just saw. So let's reset that and give her back a more heroic look because she knows what she's doing. She's in these caverns, she's good to go. Let's talk about props and weapons. I'm gonna turn on the grip controls for both of her hands because more than likely, uh, whatever props we have her hold, we just will use the grip stuff so we don't have to pose all the fingers ourselves. So in here, we're gonna see a pattern of the geo visibility, which will turn on the item. So there's the master sword behind her and then showing the controls for that item. So if we go to the hilt of the sword, uh, there is a space backhand. If you turn that on, it will auto constrain it to whatever hand she would normally be using it. Zelda is right-handed, so she's gonna be holding it in her right hand. There are a lot of other controls on some of these weapons. For example, there's these green ones, which you can use to move, bend the sword. I actually use this to lengthen the sword a bit. I feel like the master sword should be longer. So there you go. Then you have these left and right controls, which allow you to kind of stretch and smear the sword. So if you're gonna have her take a swing and you wanted to have a smear frame, you could do that pretty easily with the built-in geometry controls. Next up, we have a shield, which by default goes on her back. Super cool. Uh, turn on the shield controls and you can do the same thing. Space back arm 
puts it on the shield arm. So now she's ready for an adventure. Or we can switch it up some more. There's a bunch of other cool stuff in here. There's also an ice rod, which will go to her sword hand as well. And something nice about the ice rod is since it is a longer weapon, uh, there's not just one place where you might want to hold this. So you can actually grab that item by its main hilt control, hit the D key, hold it down, and then shift the pivot point. That'll change where the object will rotate from. So if you move that part to where her hand is, she can hold it from the top choke up on the staff if she needs to like bash someone with it. She can hold it near the bottom if she needs to hold it out and you know, link grab on sort of thing, you know, pull it from the back or just the standard spot. There's a kunai, which is just like this little Sheikah dagger on her hip. The Sheikah slate is really nice. Uh, and one thing about it is it'll go to the local world. So if you change it to world space, it doesn't jump to a hand. It goes down to origin. That way you can constrain it yourself. Since there's a whole number of ways she could be holding that object, it doesn't automatically jump to either hand. This is similar and different to the torch. If I turn on the torch, there's a control that'll go from the left hand. You can put it in the right hand. And both of those are great for if you only want her to ever hold the torch and never put it down, never reconstrain it to a different hand. She's just always gonna be holding it in that one hand. Just put it in the hand, super easy. You can also turn on a fire geometry thing that can also be animated on its own, moved around. And this is especially useful because maybe she's holding a shield in one arm and got the torch in one, or she's got the sword in her hand and the torch in the other hand. Whatever she's doing, you can just swap it back and forth. The other thing you can switch it to is the world space, which again puts it at the origin, which will then allow you to constrain it to either of the hands as you see fit to do a more advanced constraint, parent constraint method for you know, swapping hands, putting it in like a thing on the wall, taking it off again, putting it down, picking it up, that whole deal, you'll wanna have it in world space for that. There's also a book, which is really cool because it'll like open, you can move the pages individually. There's a harp, you can move the strings, there's an apple, there's a potion. She has a lot of this kind of stuff that you can just use in your shots. Now last but certainly not least, we have one of my favorite props. So the bow jumps on her back, it will go to her left hand because again, she's right-handed. We turn on the quiver, and the arrows, you'll see that those are awesome looking. And so two things I wanna point out here. Uh, first of all, the bow rig itself is really nice because you can actually move each little section of the bow. You can also grab the drawstring itself, pull that back. But if you grab a specific arrow and you pull it out, you may notice that it will rotate from the center of the arrow. Kristoff has added a really cool control in here recently, which is this little pivot. So if you want her to grab the arrow from the back, and that's where you wanna constrain it or something, you just take this little orb in the middle, you move it to where you want it to rotate from, say that's very back corner for some reason, and then you grab the control and it'll pivot from that new point. So if you need this to balance on its tip, you can rotate it from the tip. But I feel like that's worth mentioning so that you know that you wanna shift that and then constrain and have the character grab it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you check out this rig. And again, I encourage you heavily to drop a donation for Kristoff for making such a cool rig. But I can't wait to see what you make with this. If you would like to download the background kind of scene I've created, links for my Patreon down below. Please consider supporting on Patreon if you enjoy what I'm doing here. And if you wanna see more stuff, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell so you know of any new uploads. But as always, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. I do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.